How great is our God? No, no, no. Because I can't tell in your guys' voices. You guys, how great is our God? He came. And, and he came for us. How great is our God? He thought we were worthy enough to come and be a part of our lives. Amen? How great is our God? Come on now. That's what Hosanna means. How great is our God? Hallelujah. I got it. Go ahead. Watch this video, and we're going to get started. Today, today, if you're a believer, is a very special day for us. You, we just watched the videos. Today, it is, we call it Palm Sunday. They didn't call it Palm Sunday 2,000 years ago. There was a reason why Jesus was riding on a donkey. And if you don't know, Scripture said that our king, our king, would be coming humbly and riding on a donkey into his city, into his kingdom. He didn't say he was going to be coming on a big old monster horse. He didn't say he was coming to, to, with the battle gear on. He said he was going to become humble and contrite, and he's going to be riding in on a donkey. When I think of a king, what do you think of? The king of Thrones, what did you see in that TV show? You see these big monster warriors, right? My God is a monster warrior. He fights differently, though. He doesn't fight with human fight. He fights with heavenly fight, which to me is the ultimate fight. He can do things that we can't do. So this day when he comes riding in on a donkey, there's more meaning to it than that. There, they did something that he was coming to, uh, to Jerusalem for a reason. And 2,000 years ago before that, there was a dude named Abraham, right? We were talking about this. They're Adam and Eve. We, we're going from the amen, from, from the beginning to the, to the amen. And we started talking about what the, the garden and how the garden caused this sin and caused us to ha for God to have a resurrection plan, a redemptive plan for us. And that's what the series is about, going from the beginning to the end. And today we're stuck right in the middle of God's redemptive plan. Right where God needs us and wants us to be. Right there, smack in the dab of... Do you ever been in a good book and you're in the middle of the book and you're going, man, I want to know how it ends. But right now we're in the middle of the book. We're in the middle of the love story that he wrote for us. And, and it started with Abraham. He said, I'm going to bless the nations through you. And through that, he did. He gave us Jacob and Isaac and Jacob. And through them came 12 tribes, 12 nations. And they grew so big in Egypt that the Egyptians, because Pharaoh died, 
and a new pharaoh came in and got scared and said, man, they're more than us. They're, they're, they double us. They're, they, they, they're huge. And if, if they get too powerful, they're going to overtake us. So what happened? They got enslaved. And they became slaves and started working for the Egyptians. Not because they wanted to, but because they had to. And their children started crying out during this time, Lord, 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 hear us. You were with us in the desert. You got us here. And he sent this baby. Pharaoh's going to kill all these, all the firstborn babies, the newborn boys, two years or younger. And he was going to kill them all. And, and his parents had enough sense to take them and put them in the water in, in, in a little basket and send them down the Nile. And sure enough, God's plan, who finds them? Pharaoh's daughter. The king's daughter at the time. And said, and he saves, she saves him. And the coolest part is she gives him back to the mother, not even knowing. But now he's got a foot in the door. He understood what kingdom looked like. He understood what ruling looked like. He didn't like it, though. And he runs away, and God calls him back and says, go help my people. Go free my people. And God says, I'm, there's going to be a plague. And he, do, he does. What happens? There's 12 plagues, right? And the last plague is called Passover. And we're going to talk about that today. We're going to, actually, we're going to in, interact, very interactive here today. We have 12 disciples. We have 12 seats. It's not just Palm Sunday at our church. It is also Communion Sunday. So, my 12 disciples, I'm so happy and proud that you guys accepted the challenge to be my 12 disciples today. I wonder if Jesus had problems getting 12 disciples. I did. <laughs> you guys are all funny. Let's, I want to open in prayer, and then I want to read scripture so we understand God's words, not pastor's words. Amen? Amen? So, Father God, we are here today to give you praise and glory and honor and all that is right with you, Father God, I ask that we thank you for that. And I ask that you just open up our hearts, our minds, our spirits. And Lord, let us sing hallelujah. hallelujah. Let us sing praises. Let us sing hosanna from the inside out, Father God. And extort your name, Father God, above all names, Father God. Because it's about you. Your grace, your mercy, your kindness, your love that you sent your son for us, Father God. We thank you and we ask that you just ready us for, about what, for what's about to happen, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Where's my tablet? <gasps> my tablet's in the back. Can somebody get me my tablet? Can you go to the first slide? The, I, I don't. Oh, yeah, I forgot to welcome guests. <laughs> Welcome guests. We have actually some special guests here. Tomorrow is what? Election day in Maywood. No, Tuesday. Tuesday. I always get this wrong. Tuesday is election day. So we have some elected officials with, are running for, for uh, elected officials. So thank you guys for being here today. And talk to them after service. Get to know them. Because I honestly believe you, this is what Maywood is going to be about in the next few days. Honestly. I, I don't promote any. I don't. I don't. I honestly... Our church doesn't back anybody. We don't, um, but I see what some people are doing in the community, and I see how favor is upon some people. And maybe it's you, and I pray that for all the candidates um, that God has favor on them, but he says pray for all people in leadership roles. So I've been praying for you guys, for Isaiah, for Kelly, and all, all of you guys, and they showed up. So. You, uh, thank you for being here with us and, and spending Palm Sunday with us. I know you guys got to go, so if you have to leave and I'm going long-winded, you, you won't offend me. I know you guys had somewhere else to go, so 
I appreciate you guys being here. So if you are a first-time guest, though, we welcome you. Fill out on your, on your chair something called a U-card. It's all about you. We want to get to know you. We want to, uh, I want to contact with you. I want to get to know you, and you so you can get to know me. Amen? And also, when you hand that in at the end of the day, there's a Jackie and Anna are standing back there. Please hand it to them so they can give you a gift. We have a gift for you for being here today. So if you're new... Today, you get a gift. Thank you for being here with us. We appreciate that. Um, like us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, okay? We, uh, we, we, we have everything posted out there. It's a great way to keep a, in communication with us. And uh, we are going to go, that's all I have, right? We, don't, we do not have Impact Kids because Impact Kids are here today. They're in service with us today. Amen? Because they are some of the disciples. So like I said, we are in the series BC, AC, before Christ, after Christ, and right now we're in Christ. Amen? And that's what we're doing from the beginning to the end. Amen. And I want to start with this. Exodus 12, 7. This is the purpose of today. It wasn't, yes, Jesus riding in on a donkey. That was part of scripture foretold that it was going to happen this way. But this is why we as believers, it's so important to us. It says, they, they are to take some of the blood and smear it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the animal. Why, is I, why did I start there? Because he's talking about a sacrifice happening. He's talking about this last plague about to happen, the twelfth plague that it, the devil, not excuse me, the angel of God is going to pass over, pass over so ten plagues. And he says, this, Moses, this is God speaking to Moses. Tell them this. These are your instructions for eating the meal. Be fully dressed. I am fully dressed today. I'm very hot up here. Because pastor doesn't like it. <laughs> Be fully dressed. Wear your sandals. I don't have my sandals on, though, today. And carry your walking stick in your hand. Eat the meal with urgency, for this is the Lord's Passover. On that night, I will pass through the land of Egypt and strike down every firstborn and firstborn male animal in the land of Egypt. I will execute judgment against all gods. If you notice, that G is lowercase because there's only one God. There's only one creator. There's only one name above all names. Amen? And that's why we're here today. He says, uh, but... Uh, Gods of Egypt, for I am the Lord. But the blood on your doorsteps will serve as a sign marking the houses where you are, to, are staying. When I see the blood, 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 blood. Old Testament is very bloody and very sacramental. But this blood that he's talking about is a foreshadow of Jesus' blood for us. Of what he did for us on the cross. And what he's still doing to this day for our salvation. Amen? When I see the blood, I will pass over. This plague of death will not touch you and will not strike. And I, when I strike the land of Egypt, this is the day to remember. This is why we do it. It's a day to remember. Each year from generation to generation, you must celebrate it as a special festival to the Lord. And this is a law for all time. But pastor, we don't live under the law. But you know what? You're right, we don't. But we still live inside the law. The law lives inside of us. And it, we are supposed to, he, he passed over and we're supposed to remember this. Because this is where our salvation comes from. If I, if you, how many of you talk about family stuff in your life? Man, I remember when this happened. I remember when that happened. This when, Right? We talk about the past to get to the future because it teaches us. Amen? I was, um, this whole, I was reading some stuff about Passover, and I, I, I was reading something by a rabbi, and he, he says, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs says, the journey from slavery to freedom is one we need to travel in every generation. He says, so we were commanded to gather our families together every year at this time and tell the story of what it was like to be a slave and what it felt like to go free. And I, I you know, the, way, the, the whole theme of the Passover and the meal is redemption. 
Passover was a time not just for the Jews. It was a time for all believers that believe in the Passover meal, that believe in what Jesus Christ has done for us. It's to remind us of the suffering that others have and the oppression that we even have today still. Because we do have oppression. We still have slaves. We still have people not living the life that God has called them to live because of, of things. And at the meal, the Seder meal, many Jews draw attention to presenting uh, present-day injustices. So they talk about it. They pray about it. They give they, and they ask God to help them. And, and, and the whole point is to have the hope that all people will be free someday. Amen? And that's why we're here today. Because that's exactly what Jesus gives us. Amen. Jesus gives us freedom. He gives us redemption. He gives us deliverance. He gives us freedom to have a relationship with the creator and not put him aside and say, he's too great, I can't, I can't know him. He says, no, that's exactly what I came for. I came that my blood would pass over you and save you, and you all you need to do is accept that gift and to believe in that gift, amen? So today, like I said, is a very special day that does not belong on Jesus' table. <clears throat> I don't even like having this on there, but I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't memorize all the scriptures. There's a lot of scriptures today. I, I can tell the stories, but I want to read God's word. Because when, when pastor paraphrases, it doesn't always come out right. So, my disciples, this is what he said to you guys that day. Before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and to return to his Father. He had loved his disciples during this ministry on earth, and now he loved them to the very end. It was time for supper, and the devil had already prompted Judas. This is what Jesus was doing with his 12. He's going to have dinner with them. If you notice how many times Jesus eats in the Bible in ministry, How many years did, G did God feed the Israelites in the desert? <laughs> Literally gave them food and ministered to them. He saw his father do it, so he does it. So he, he says Jesus knew that the father had already given him authority over everything that he had come from God and would return to God. So he got up from the table. And he took off his robe. This is my robe today. I don't have glasses on, so now I can't see the screen. I had to get a big enough towel today to wrap around Pastor's waist. But keep reading. Give me that. Yeah, thank you. See, I didn't practice this beforehand. He poured the water in the basket. Come on, work with me. All right. Because we live in the 21st century, it's 21st or 22nd century? What is it? 21st century? And because of health reasons. See, Jesus didn't, he didn't care about that stuff. Jesus walked on dirt, sand, dirt rogues. He walked on poop. He walked in fields. His feet were dirty. There's a, there's a reason why he did this. And he didn't care about diseases and all these things. But since we live in this world now, I was asked to do it clumsy, to do it a little differently by people. So, but he did. He took water, poured it into his basket, and he gets down. Can I have my disciples? Because they had no shoes on at that time. Can you guys please prepare yourselves? I am going to wash your feet. I wasn't lying when I said it. You only want one foot? That's fine. I don't care. And they asked me to use gloves. And you all get your own towel. And you have a rag behind you to wipe, to dry them off. Who 
Who's ready? Ladies first. But this is what he did. This is your king. This isn't pastor doing it. This was your king. I want you, when I read scripture, I put myself in scripture. I put my name in scripture. I put your names in scripture as I'm reading stuff. This is Jesus. This is not pastor now. I want you to, I want you to really think about what he did for you. Your king got down on his knees. He said, got down on his knees, took the feet of the disciples, and washed them. And he does this. That's your towel? Over and over and over. You think his water was warm? You think his water was warm? And he washed them. Now their feet, I might have. You got to remember, your towels are behind you to dry them off. They're right behind you. So I got, a disciple came out of nowhere. A disciple came out of nowhere. Good, good warm water, right? Man, you got, we all think that, think about how, think about what he did for us. You got a towel behind you. Think about this. You think Jesus was clean? His feet were dirty too. Do you remember what the, the lady did at the dinner? She got up and washed his whole body with oil and anointed him before his time. Before his time. You got a towel behind you if you want to dress. Oh my goodness. Oh, my goodness. This is probably what they were thinking, too. You can't wash my feet. You can't wash my feet. I'm no good. Because what did Peter say, right? Peter did it. Hi, baby. And I love that you're staying. You want to hunt me? Come on. Yeah, it's cold. The park district doesn't have hot water. <laughs> You're cold, huh? Yeah, yeah. That's your towel. Uh oh. Come on. Come on. Yeah, it's not that cold. Oh, you want me to do yours? Jesus said, bring the babies to me. And he washed. Uh, brother. You know, I don't want to soak you. Amen. 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 It's all good, brother. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Why not put in this back? just hot. Amen. But you, you realize what he does, what he did at this moment. Our king humbled himself, got down on a dirty ground where he should have been sitting on a throne <clears throat> with his scepter in hand Judging, that's what kings did. They judged and made rules. Instead, he said, no, no, no. And he says, do you understand what I just did? Do you understand what I just did? I gave you an example, he says. An example to do the same thing. As I washed your feet, you were to wash others. See, it doesn't matter what position you are in life. 
if you are in leadership, if you're in politics, if you're leading an organization, if you're just a homemaker, if you have a job, it doesn't matter. We were set apart as believers. And being set apart as a believer means we don't live of this world. We live of the cross and what the resurrection and the saving grace does for us. He says, I don't hoard it over. Don't hoard it over like the other rulers in the land do. So after washing their feet, I got to stand this. It's just heavy on my heart. Because we're believers, we, uh, be, uh, we, the world sees us different. They need to see us different. They need to see us different. Because if they see us and see the world in us, what makes us any different? Why are they going to say, this guy's got something and I want it? Because they already have that. Well, when they see your joy, your happiness, even during your pain and suffering, Jesus sat on this cross. He didn't say a word. He, he, he could have cast down legions of angels to come down and save him. He didn't open his a mouth. If he's going to suffer, we're going to suffer. And I'm not saying every day of your life is going to be a suffering. Because that's not why God has us here. It's to sing hallelujah. It's to give him praise. It's to give him worship during those times. So when people see you struggle, when see people see you in that light, when people see good happening, what, 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 what's the difference? Because my maker loves me. He loved me enough to get down to get up, to get in, and to come out. So after he does this, after washing their feet, he put on his robe, sat down, and he, and, he, and he asked them, do you understand what I was doing? You call me teacher and Lord. And you're right, he was, right? He's, his te the, he's their teacher, he's their Lord. I don't think we understand what that word Lord really means. That's not today's message. You are right because that's what I am. And since I am your Lord and your teacher and have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I've given you this example. Do as I have done to you. I tell you the truth. Slaves are no greater than your master. We're no better than anyone. We all sin, but we fall under the grace of God because we believe him. Amen. You can clap to that, man. You don't have to be quiet at this church. You don't have to be quiet. Nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends the message. He's saying, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not better than God. He's, he's my father. I'm him, but I'm no better. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. See, the, uh, for us acting this way, there's a blessing behind it. That I don't think we ever even caught that line. God sees what we do. And because of that, and, and the way we treat others, and the way we treat non-believers, and the way we treat believers, our own brothers and sisters in Christ, he sees that, and we get blessed for it. And he says in Luke t chapter 22, Jesus told them, In this world, the kings and great men lord it over their people, yet, they're call uh, yet they are called friends of the people. They put yokes on, they put, I'm not going into government, but government and, and, and organizations and all kinds of things put this stuff over us to reign over us, but we don't have to let that, they make up their rules, let them. I still live by other rules. I have to live inside the rules. But I don't have to believe him. There's a difference. Those who are the greatest among you should take the lowest drink, and the leader should be like a servant. 
Who is more important, the one who sits at the table or the one who serves? The one who sits at the table, of course, but not here. For I am among you as one who serves. He says, you have stayed with me in my trial, my time of trial. And just as my father granted me a kingdom, I now grant it to you. He's giving us the kingdom. We are kingdom men and kingdom women and kingdom babies and kingdom kids. We own the kingdom. But we also serve in the kingdom. We also serve in the kingdom. I now grant you the right to eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. And you sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. My disciples, it's time. The word says it's time. And they sat down together at the table. I love what he says here. I've been very eager. I've been very eager. Sit, you guys sit. I've been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. For I tell you now that I won't eat of this meal again until its, until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup of wine. Wait, wait, wait. Did you guys ever catch this? He takes a cup of wine twice. In, in this. I don't have wine, guys. It's grape juice. And he gave thanks to it. And I'm not giving it to you. Because that's not what he does. And he gave thanks for it. And then he said, take this among you and yourselves. For I will not drink wine again until the kingdom of God has come. It doesn't say he drank it. Because his words say, I will not drink of this cup again until my time has come in the kingdom of heaven. Then he took some bread. We're going to have to kill you now. But he, he took some bread blessed it. Lord, thank you. This is why we say prayers before we eat. This is why in, the, in the, our Father he says, our Father he gives thanks to God first his Father first for providing this. And I can imagine what his words were. Father, you gave us this. You gave us, you gave me these, these twelve. I haven't lost them. And I thank you for the food that you, you've given us. And he says he broke it. And then he passed it. Some to you passed it down. Pass it down. Take some bread, brother. Take some bread, sister. And he says, This is my body. This is my body. which is going to be given to you for, for you in just a couple hours. And I want to stop real quick. I, we at Impact Church practice open communion. If you are a believer, have communion with us. If you're not, guess what? You don't need communion. But if you're not, I want to give you that opportunity because even at Jesus' table, there was one, and I'll make you that one. No, it's John. I pointed to John. Even that betrays him. But he gave him the opportunity to sit at the table. See, this table is open for everybody that wants to sit at it. You just have to accept it. You just have to say, Lord, I really do believe that you came to earth, that you lived on this earth, that you died, that you were buried, that you rose again. Because next week we're going to talk about that rising again. And, and he says, do this in remembrance of me. 
because his body was going to be sacrificed for you. His blood, in a second, was going to be sacrificed for each and every one of us. Not just for Pastor, not just for Gregory, not just for William. It's that for everyone. The word says that every knee will bow one day and call him Lord. It depends on where you're going to call him Lord from. And this table is open for you. If you've never made Christ your Savior, this is your opportunity. And if you have and you say, Lord, that cost me so much to me, I need to just reevaluate my life. I need you to, I know I'm forgiven, but I need to just give it to you again. Hey, if that's you, awesome. But I want you to take a time right now to yourselves. And I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to ask for forgiveness inside your heart. Whatever is bugging and struggling and tempting or whatever is happening in your life, give it to him right now. Leave it at the cross right now. Because he says, this is my body, which is for you. And he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of the Passover. Do this in remembrance of the blood that washes away your, your sins and cleanses you. Amen? And they ate it. Next slide. Then, after supper, he took a cup and he poured the wine. Again, he's serving. In my eyes, this is how I see it. You see all the pretty Passover or the Last Supper pictures, right? Jesus sitting in the middle. I see him serving. I see him pouring out his blood for each of them, for all of us. And he does it willingly. He doesn't even complain. He asks once, and he didn't even ask in the garden. He just, man, God, Father, if you can take this from me, which I know you can, if it's your will, I'm going to do it. He didn't say, I don't want to do it. He just was human. We all have those moments. And he poured out the blood, and he's pouring his love into their cups right now. I don't even know if they even realized this at that time. Thank you, Mary. And he poured it out. The last blood offering that we ever need. The only blood offering that we ever needed. And he said, this is the new covenant. And my blood is about to be shed for you to, to forgive many sins, it says. And he gave thanks to his father again. And he said, do this in remembrance of me. Amen? And they drank. That was the disciple that got drunk. <laughs> She's like, he did not just say that. Pastor Anthony has a sense of humor. Life's too short not to. After this, they probably sat for a little while. Judas gets up, he leaves. But the other 11 sit here. And eventually Jesus says, come with me. He grabs three of them 
is the three closest to him. And they go to a place, to the garden, and he go, they go and pray. And all three of them, what do they do? Fall asleep. In our walk with God, in our walk with Jesus, in our walk with the Holy Spirit, sometimes our faith falls asleep, doesn't it? We get common with it. We don't look at it as a true blessing that our Savior loved us so much. Our Creator loved each and every one of you so much. And especially you. He said, bring my children to me. Bring my children. Bring the children to me. And have faith like a child. Faith like a child doesn't question. Doesn't, uh, doesn't, they just believe, and they don't let it, and they don't let it get dry. They believe in mom and dad. They believe in what's happening. They trust. See, we can't let our faith go to sleep. We can't let it get dulled by what's happening around us, the drugs, the alcohol, the life, the craziness, the depression, the anxieties. That you can't, the pressures of this life. You got to wake it up. Amen. We're believers. We are to be awake and not asleep. I know that pastor scared you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. I yelled. That's the first time, though, she's like played with me. It was awesome. And she waved and kissed me. Wake up. Don't be asleep. Let the Holy Spirit guide you in the path that you're supposed to go. Listen for his small voice speaking to you. Next week we are going to, we're not even concluding next week. Next week is not the finale of what Christ has done for us. We're, we're only getting close to that last amen. I encourage each and every one of you next week. on the. Can you guys get those little uh, invite cards? And make sure that everybody leaves with at least a couple in their hands. Make sure that you, you hand them and take them and invite somebody. We have a very special Easter service. Easter is one of the one services that you can invite people and they say yes to. Because everybody's a, a believer on Easter. <laughs> Which is good. Because his message gets to be told. And some believers might not come, but they come because you invited them. Amen? I tell you guys all the time, I love you, he loves you. And I do love you. We have a saying at Impact, to be a blessing. I want you guys to go out today and be a blessing.